Hey everyone, it's Sarah from Sassy Reads, and today I will be talking about the books that I read in May. So I haven't actually talked about like the books that I've officially read in a really long time. Um, since probably 2018 I think was like the last round of books that I talked about. So I do want to get back into it, but I thought it would just be easier for me to talk about the most recent month and then we can backtrack. Um, so we're going to talk about May. And the books that I read in May, I read 24 books in May. Yeah, so I read 24 books in May. Um, but before I dive in, I do want to just address everything that's been going on in our country. Um, I think it's really important that we do not just keep the conversation um, of Black Lives Matter prevalent right now. And so um, I encourage you to, you know, do your own research talk to friends. If you don't have any black friends, go make some. Um, yeah, that's really important. You should probably hang out with people who don't look like you. Um, and you should have a vast array of experiences that surround you so that you can check your privilege constantly. Um, don't just keep this conversation for now. Keep it forever because it's not just a one-time conversation. Racism and prejudice has never been a one-time conversation and it's sad that it takes events like what happened with George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and Ahmaud when he was running to bring us to this conversation back again because it never really stops. Like if you think about it, The Hate You Give came out not that long ago and it was sparked by a lot of different people who passed away because of police brutality. This is not a once in a lifetime conversation and it's never going to be. And I'm going to actually leave a pinned comment of organizations that are no longer accepting donations but organizations that are. So hopefully if you have money, donate. If you don't have money, go to your library and educate yourself. If you have streaming services, watch stuff by black creators or with black characters expand your horizons talk to new people have dialogues on facebook instagram twitter wherever you know like this society is only we're only able really to talk about this more because we're in the digital age it's not something that our mothers or fathers could have talked about and so start in your homes start with your families start with your friends talk have discussions okay i just want to say that really important thing to say and I will be leaving those links to those groups down below hopefully I can link them as well but if I don't link them you can hit a Google search um, yeah so I read 24 books in the month of May I'm looking at my list of books right now okay so the first book that I read in May was Elevation by Stephen King this is a novella and it follows um, What's his name? Scott. Scott notices that he is able to lose weight and it's almost like he is not necessarily dying but floating up. So think like reverse thinner, you know, Richard Bachman, old, old Stephen King stuff. Um, this is set in Castle Rock and if you know anything about Castle Rock, it is a really kind of horrible town. Really bad things happen there. People are kind of sucky. But, um... This novel has, this novella I mean, it has a lot more hope um, interwoven in it and a lot of people don't like it because it seems like this white guy is coming in to help save the lesbians of the town, which like I totally get that's a fair cri criticism, um, but hello it's in Castle Rock and if you know the history of Castle Rock, like yeah, it it's not like the, he even technically saved them. He just became friends with them and realized that he wasn't as prejudiced as the rest of the town. Um, and he decided that he was going to actually spend time with these women and get to know them. And, you know, it's not really about saving them, but I can see that a lot of people would see it that way. I don't see it that way because that wasn't the tone of the story. He wasn't there to save the day. He was there to help somebody. And... It shouldn't matter what your sexual orientation is. If you're saving somebody, save them. Be a, be a good person. Um, so yeah, I gave that one three and a half stars. Um, it's like a nice novella. It's not my favorite work by King. It's not my least favorite, but it's, it's pretty decent. Uh, the next book I read was For All Who Wonder. 
um, what is it? Why Knowing God is Better Than Knowing It All by Robin Dance. I gave this book three stars. I had started this, I think, in January, and it took me forever to read it just because I really thought that this was going to be a great book that really tackled, like, the Israelites and them wandering in the wilderness and how we have that same spiritual struggle. No, no, no. That's not what this is. This is very much Robin Dance's story of her struggling in her life, which is perfectly fine. If that's what you're interested in reading, pick this one up. That's not what I wanted. So, three stars. Um, the next book I read was Hidden Bodies by Carolyn Kepnes. This is the sequel to the book You, which also has a TV show. The second season of You is adapted from this book very loosely, I may say so. So we follow Joe after he has killed Guinevere Beck. Is that really a spoiler at this point? I feel like you go into You knowing she's not gonna make it out alive. Like, that's kind of like, I guess, what that's obvious I don't know why that wouldn't be um but yeah Joe is like a full-blown serial killer at this point and he continues to kill people um I think I prefer the ending of season two as opposed to the ending of this one but I really do like the fact that this is where Kevin has decided to go as far as the ending goes because I have a feeling that the next two books in the series which is how many we're supposed to get after this, will have a lot of really crazy dynamics following this because the storyline of the second show does not even hint at this ever being um, something that could happen to Joe. This, though, set it up really intelligently, kind of creepy, really just smart. Um, I also didn't care for love as much in this book. I really liked love in the show, probably because she's psychotic and I feel like she balances Joe out well um she balances Joe out okay in this one but I don't feel like her character really makes a whole lot of sense um in the grand scheme of things just because it seems like she was just Joe's sexual plaything who he kind of loves but not really because can he really feel love but you know what do I know about Joe Although I've, I've spent two books in his mind, so I feel like I know Joe very well at this point. I will continue to read this series. I'm giving this one 4.25 stars, though, because let's be honest, it is not nearly as smart as you. It has a lot of flubs. It's overly sexualized. Like, you was sexualized. This is just gross. Like, there are moments where I was like, I'm just going to skip this scene in the audiobook because I don't want to hear it. And I feel like it was just gross for the sake of being gross. Um, sexually and not for the like to show that Joe is a creep it was just let's just be gross and have these nasty sex scenes that maybe will tickle someone's fancy but I was like eh, no I'm okay like skip that so yeah I could have done without that I feel like if it wasn't as jarring to be thrown into those situations I would have enjoyed the novel a lot more but because of that, it's getting 4.25 stars. The next book that I read, hold on, I gotta move my mouse pad down, is For Everyone by Jason Reynolds. Um, Jason Reynolds is a fantastic YA poet. Like, I've only read his poetry, so I should probably change that and read one of his novels, actually. But I love listening to Jason Reynolds narrate his own poetry. Um, for Everyone is a long poem about dreams and how everyone has dreams and what that means for us. And I loved it. I gave it five stars. Like, it was so beautiful. So, so perfect. It was what I needed. And you should all go listen to it. I mean, if you want to read it, read it. But listen to it. Poetry is always meant to be heard. It's an experience. Um, especially now, particularly in our age, we have more spoken poetry and slam poetry and things of that nature. So I just feel like poetry, when you hear it, it like sets something inside of you on fire. It, it evokes an emotion, which is what poetry is supposed to do. Sometimes when you read a poem, if it doesn't spark that emotion, it's because you're not connecting with the page and you may just need to hear it. And he just, he can narrate so well. He's brilliant. The next book I read was The Return by Rachel Harrison. This is a de debut, oh, I can't talk, a debut horror novel about um, a girl whose friend goes missing. They're all like adult women, so I guess I should say a woman whose 
best friend in this friend group goes missing. They have a group of four women, um, and they're all really close, but this woman that went missing is her person, and she goes missing, and then she comes back after two years, and one of the girls in the group decides that they should go to this really fancy bougie hotel where everyone gets a room and each room has like the, a theme. So there's like an Edgar Allan Poe room, a Tar Tarzan room, a Cassandra room. There's some other room that one of the girls had, but I don't remember. There's just a lot going on. So they're in this really creepy secluded hotel, I think in Colorado, and things go bump in the night. Their friend is back. They don't know what's wrong with her. She look a little tore up. Something is wrong. It is a horror novel all the way. Like, campy horror. I loved it. I gave it four and a half star stars. I can tell a lot of people would probably absolutely hate The Return, but I ate it up. Like, if I'm going to read a horror novel, I want to feel like I'm reading a Fear Street Goosebumps novel for adults. And that's what it felt like. And I loved it. I loved the ending. I loved that we got a bit of a Wendigo twist. I loved that it wasn't all cut and dry. And I loved, loved just the unfolding of things. The only reason I'm not giving it five stars but four and a half stars is because I kind of hated the narrator like she would go backwards in her timeline and then she'd like show you how unreliable she was and I was like girl I don't really care how creepy you are that you broke into your lover's wife's house and touched all their stuff like you do you boo I don't need to know all that that's irrelevant to the story but that's just how I felt <laughs> so you know maybe that's something you want to know about your main characters but I was like this is this is just unnecessary and so yeah there were a lot of little moments like that but overall pacing was really creepy the hotel was an excellent setting for this horrifying new revelation and it was just a really good novel so check that one out it's called the return the next book well i read another novella this one is by stephen king and his son joe hill and it is called In the Tall Grass, and I love this story so much. I gave it five stars. It is one of the best horror novellas I have ever read, like, hands down. This book was horrifying. In the Tall Grass goes to the darkest places. Like, if you've seen the movie, scratch that from your mind, because the movie has a horrible plot that has some extra stuff that just messes up the storytelling aspect. This novella goes to the darkest and deepest depths and it will leave you feeling hopeless. That's a good horror story. You don't want to walk away from a horror story feeling like you could conquer something. You want to feel like you're still stuck and you're never going to really know if you can escape the horror of what you just finished witnessing. And that's how this one leaves you. It's a good si cyclical story that I think a lot of people love if they get like their hands on it. I got it from the library and y it's not like a physical book that you can own. You're gonna have to get the ebook somewhere but if you want to read this one it is definitely worth it. Um, the next book that I read was you guys, I finally finished A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab. I have been reading A Darker Shade of Magic since like 2017. I had to restart it in 2018 and then 2019 came around and I was like, yeah, we're going to kind of read it. 2020 came around and I was like, I'm going to just listen to the audiobook and finish. I was like on 30% at this point and I finished it. I gave it three stars. A Darker Shade of Magic has potential to be a really great fantasy novel. The issue that I have with it is it doesn't know which direction it wants its characters to go. It doesn't know if it wants the characters to be strong or if it wants it to be ballsy. And those are two very different things. And so they don't really complement each other well. Um, Lila and what's his name? Kel? They're, they're okay. I don't hate them, but I don't really like them, and I wasn't really rooting for them. I was kind of rooting for the villains. That was the issue. I was like, the villains here are fascinating. I kind of like them in this world that they're trying to ruin a lot more than the world that these two look like they can barely even save. I don't know why they were trying to save the world. They look like they had no clue what they were doing. Um, I, I am apparently a lot more passionate about this story than I thought, because apparently when... I was reading it, I had like subpar emotions and I could care less, but talking about it, I seem to feel very strongly about it. Um, so yeah, it's alright. I will continue with the series. I'll let you know 
if the series is actually a good one or if it's a complete and total flop for me. Um, as of right now, I'm kind of giving it a, a middle of the road finger. You know, we're not a good thumbs up yet. So, we'll see. If I really, really don't like the second book, I just may not even read the third book. But at this point, I'm like, man, I'm al I've already invested time in one book. And there's only two more. If it was like 15, I wouldn't invest the time. But it's like, it's just two more. So, I'm, you know, that's kind of where I'm at. Um, the next book I read is You Are Not Alone by Greer Hendricks and Sarah Pickenin. I got this one from Book of the Month. And you guys, these colors are so bright and just shocking. I love it. I love these two colors together. So this book follows um, Shay who is kind of in and out on her luck like all mystery thrillers are. Um, she caught her boyfriend cheating. Is this one where she caught her boyfriend cheating? Probably. Maybe she didn't. I know she lost her job. This is how the way that all thrillers st start you guys. They probably saw somebody cheating on them or they lost their job. She didn't see somebody cheating on her. She lives with a man who doesn't love her back. And he's got a girlfriend. So, you know, she's down on her luck. Um, she actually witnesses a girl. Well, I don't know why I keep calling these women girls. She witnesses a woman getting hit by a subway train. And it, like, ruins her life. And this is the story of her getting involved in the women who ruined the girl who jumped in front of the train's life. That's what this is about. If that doesn't interest you, don't read it. If it does interest you and you like this duo, pick it up. I gave it four stars because, you know, I prefer an anonymous girl. I liked the statistics and I liked the, psych the psychology uh, research study. But this one, I, I didn't always love it, but I didn't hate it. It was super predictable for most of the plot. But I did like some of the twists. Not all of them. Maybe like one or two. But I really just enjoyed my reading experience, which is what I look for in a thriller. I want to enjoy reading it. So this one's good for that one. If you're just looking for something fun and quick. Um, then the next one that I read was The Other People by C.J. Tudor. I gave this one 4.5 stars. Um, I didn't even know this book existed until Books and Lala made it um, one of her Literary Dead book club picks. And then I was like, hmm, a lot of people seem to hate this. Maybe I'll like it. So I got it from the library, listened to it on audiobook. It follows a man whose daughter has gone missing and his wife was murdered. And he believes that his daughter is not dead. And we also follow another woman who has a girl who is not her daughter and obviously is connected to the other guy. Is it a spoiler if, like, it's really obvious at this point? So anyway, there's a lot of paranormal stuff. I apparently love paranormal thrillers. I just need to read more of them because I jive so well with them. I really liked um, The Dark Web. A p aspect of this story and I felt like it added a really great layer the next hold on I got up okay so at the end of the audiobook there are three st short stories by CJ Tudor there is the line at the gate five stars fantastic go read that one uh, the man in the box three and a half stars I liked it you could pass on it if you wanted to the February house two stars I didn't really care for that one but, you know, some people will probably like it. Uh, the next book that I read was The Word Collector by Peter Reynolds. If you go on, I can't, I don't know if it's Michelle or Barack's Instagram. It's one of theirs. But they read this book together um, to promote literacy because I think they're opening a library in Chicago. I think it's Chicago. Don't quote me on that. I know they're opening a library. But um, this picture book is so cute. It's about the importance of words, how we should share words, the meaning of spreading words, and I just love that. It was so wholesome. So check that one out if you are interested in a children's book. Then I read, ooh, I'm talking so fast. Okay. Okay. Then I read The Last Girls by Demetra Brodsky. I gave this one two stars. Um, this is, I think, more my fault than the book's fault because when I requested this from Tor, I thought it was a post-apocalyptic novel about three sisters who are preppers. This novel is about three sisters who are preppers, which is your, your doomsday preppers, but 
they are not in an apocalypse. So it's definitely a contemporary novel. It has a mystery aspect to it, but I was like, it is not that big of a mystery because there's this other character who we follow every now and then and I'm like okay it's super obvious by like 23% maybe even 30% where the story decided to go and it's kind of like oh we're going in this direction I don't know how I feel about it it did have a really like interesting um final showdown and I felt like those stakes were really high like I was like oh my god like somebody's gonna die this is good but then of course you know like nobody actually dies everyone gets arrested and everyone gets to live a good life and yay we love a good contemporary and you know like I like contemporaries but my issue with them is they like to have happy endings and I'm like life doesn't always have a happy ending and it felt really neatly wrapped up and I was like this should feel a lot messier like this was a doomsday prepper terrorist group it should feel a lot messier than how it was wrapped up but what do I know I'm not the writer here I think Brodsky had some great ideas and concepts it just did not work with this reader so it was it was definitely all me so two stars for the last girls then I listened to the last book on the left stories of murder mayhem and Mayhem from History's Most Notorious Serial Killers. This is by the dudes who have the last podcast on the left. I have never listened to the last podcast on the left. And I was interested in this book because I like true crime. I'm interested in true crime novels. I like reading true crime. I like watching true crime videos and documentaries. And I'm fascinated and I want to learn more because true crime shows us history, right? So my issue with this book even though I gave it four stars because the amount of information in this book was really, really good, you guys. Like, I think it's Marcus Parks who does the information and the history gathering. He's fantastic at that. Like, whoa. Um, I could have done without those two buffoons in the back. Um, they said a lot of really just disgusting and sometimes distasteful things. Like, for instance, and this is a personal preference, when they were talking about Richard Ramirez's parents and how a lot of their kids um, were disabled and they were like, well, they should have just stopped there because obviously it was an issue. I was like, oh my gosh, like how ableist and disgusting towards people with special needs. Like they're special needs people. That doesn't make them abhorrent. And, you know, like, yes, Richard Ramirez was a monster and he did horrible things, but that is not a product of the fact that his parents were not able to create your perfect human like you so want, um, Henry Zabrowski. So yeah, I was pretty much like, I, I got really like, kind of heated about that. So that's why I'm giving this four stars because the history aspect is really great. The pointless and tasteless jokes were just not... Sometimes they were funny, and I, like, found myself laughing, so they weren't all horrible. But I feel like a lot of them were for the sake or the expense of people. And I don't think that that's okay. Like, we should never drag people to feel superior to them. And I feel like that's their level of dark humor, comedy. And, like, that's cute, but it's toxic, and I don't want to hear that all day. So, you know, if that's your jive, go ahead and pick up this book. If you're a fan of the podcast, you'll probably like it. I've chosen to never listen to the podcast because it totally turned me off. Um, I don't care how well researched Mark, like Marcus can put something out. I don't want to hear the other two in the background. Even if the joke is so freaking funny, I'm sure there's something three seconds later that will make me want to shut my podcast off. So, I would just choose for a personal preference to find more respected and loving true crime um content creators who i prefer okay so now that we're getting off of my rant about that <laughs> okay i read bonhoeffer the abridged version uh this is by eric metaxas i should have looked up how to pronounce that sorry so yeah, this is the story of Dietrich Bonhoeffer, who is one of the most famous German theologians, and theologians really ever. He wrote The Cost of Discipleship. He basically made Hitler so mad that Hitler executed him 16 days before the end of World War II because he was such a big threat to Hitler. Bonhoeffer is just so cool, y'all. Like, 
if you don't know the immense history behind the German church during Nazi Germany, like, you're missing out because that is an area of history that was so important and made Hitler so angry because he saw them as such a threat. Because keep in mind, if you're Christian, you're part of the Jews, like, partnership like Christ says that when you die in like well it wasn't Christ but Paul said that when you died and accepted Christ as your savior you were brought into the sonship of his throne which means that you are brought in to the Israelites as a chosen one of God and so that was not something Hitler wanted to support. He was like, we're getting rid of all this. We're going to just start practicing to false pagan gods like we used to. We're going to get rid of the cross. We're going to turn this. Like, he tried to rewrite the Bible, y'all. So, yeah, it was a mess. But this book was so good. I know the unabridged version is fantastic, too. But I didn't want to read 600 pages, so I read the smaller version, and I got just as much out of it, and I loved it, just as much as probably someone who's read the full version. It was amazing. It's so good that I got my dad to pick it up. He's enjoying it. So, yeah, it just go read it. Learn some history. Um, then I picked up a random read. I got an arc of this book, I think in 2016? I think it was 2016. It's called I'm Thinking of Ending Things by Anne Reed. Whew, y'all, I picked this book up on a whim. Like, nothing really said, I, I'm going to read this book. I was literally just like, that book keeps popping up in my head, and I just want to read it. So I did, and that book destroyed me. So we follow this girl. She doesn't have a name. Her name is literally the girl. <laughs> um, and she is going on a road trip with her boyfriend to meet his parents. And it just goes from one really weird event to the next. And it's definitely like setting it up for a horror novel. And then it takes a very interesting psychological turn. And it left me wrecked. I was a sobbing mess at like 2 a.m. in the morning. Because this book left me feeling so sad and helpless for this character. And the events that occurred were so tragic. And oh my gosh, like... I'm thinking of ending things as a five-star read, like, all the way for me. Like, there is nothing about this book that I would change because everything about it was so brilliant and so, like, gut-punching. Like, I, I finished that book and I, like, I had to go pray afterward because I just felt this deep burden for people who are alone and struggle with mental health. And this book shows, like, how that can happen. It's probably a bit glorified because, you know, it's entertainment, but, like, at the same time, like, people who are alone and struggle with mental health really don't have the help or support they need. And it's just so heartbreaking. Um, and this book really shows how that can happen. The next book I listened to is Something She's Not Telling Us by Darcy Bell. I got the arc of this, but I was like, I think I want to listen to it because I listened to A Simple Favor in 2019. And A Simple Favor and I had a weird relationship. Like, I ate that book up. I was like, this book is such trash. I cannot stop listening. And then I got to the end of A Simple Favor and I was like, this is not it. This is not it. So, red flag, red flag, red flag. But I was like, you know, I like Darcy Bell's writing. So, maybe her second book will be really good. Um, no. She's not telling us something was trash. I'm giving it two stars until I write my review. It's probably gonna drop. Definitely gonna drop. Um, this book follows a family of really rich people and uh, our main character's brother gets a girlfriend named Ruth and this main character is like her brother always brings home crazy girls and you know like we just all saw where that that was going her daughter gets kidnapped from the school by ruth but she technically wasn't kidnapped because ruth could sign her out because she didn't take her off of the list it was just your typical mommy thriller which i think darcy bell is good at um but it was boring 
it was lackluster. The characters were pancake dry and not like a fluffy pancake, but pancake dry. Like there was no nothing. It was crunchy. It was stale. It was not it. And I think I'm going to break up with Darcy Bell's writing because it just wasn't good for me. It wasn't good. So the next book I listened. No, I read this one. I read the first book in Four Past Midnight called The Langoliers. I gave The Langoliers four and a half stars. It was really good to reread this. I read this book in 2010, so it's been 10 years. And it was actually, I read this in the summer too, so it's been like exactly 10 years. Oh, we, we just love how these things come around full circle. But The Langoliers probably is the reason why I was scared of planes for so long because we follow a bunch of people who are on a plane and then all of a sudden the people who wake up find that everyone has gone missing including the pilot and so the plane is on autopilot and they don't know what's going on and now they have to figure out what happened to everybody and how they're gonna get the plane down but the good news is is one of the people just so happens to be a pilot you know I loved it four and a half stars the middle drags but that's okay. It's not horribly annoying in the dragging. It just didn't make it a five star read for me. But Dina is my favorite character in this book. Dina made this book so good and she deserved better. That's all I'm going to say about that. So yeah, I'm still reading this one. I've already finished the second one and I'm on the third one in this collection. I'll talk more about that later. But yeah, so after that one I read unveiled the bible the quran and women by esther ahmad this is a biography about esther ahmad who was going to start training as a jihadist um because she wanted to ensure that her family could go to heaven and she was convinced that that was the only way well she actually ended up getting like her period and she was like oh my gosh they're not gonna accept me i can't do this and that night that she got her period two days before she ended up having a vision of jesus and it like shook her and like woke her up did it wake her up spiritually yes probably not like physically but it shook her and her whole family was not accepting of her being a christian um especially because her dad was like all Christians need to die. That's why you're going to be a jihadist. Um, yeah, so she was a terrorist or training to be one. And her story is super powerful. I realize I don't know anything about the Quran and I'm super ignorant and that is just not okay. So I'm going to be more intentional with reading other books from Muslim people, both men and women. Um, I do have some YA books that I definitely want to pick up, so I definitely want to do that. But that book was so phenomenal. It came out in May, actually, so you can get your hands on a copy of it if you're interested. Just because she compares scripture to the Quran, so if you don't have a good idea of the Quran um, or scripture, why not read both? And then you can see somebody who's had two different aspects of the religion. Because keep in mind that the Quran actually comes from the Jewish religion we like all three religions stem together the issue is um well that's a whole nother debate but there's a lot of things that the Quran split off from scripture um yeah I don't have to do a history lesson on that because I probably don't have enough information to teach that lesson <laughs> at least adequately I I know a lot of stuff but not not enough um, then I read a short story called Itsy Bitsy by John A- Aju- Oh Lord, I should have looked this up. John Ajava Levinkis? Is that right? Probably not. Um, he's the guy who wrote, like, Let Me In and that kind of, like, horror stuff. I gave this itsy bitsy story 2.5 stars i wasn't a big fan of it it followed this weird paparazzi dude who was like trying to take pictures of this hollywood couple naked and i was like this is uncomfortable like no i don't feel bad that this happened to you so you know sometimes it's hard to root for horror characters you're like no you totally deserve that he totally deserved that 
Um, the next one I listened to was Fire Road, The Napalm Girl's Journey Through the Horrors of War to Faith, Forgiveness, and Peace by Kim Fu Fan T. I T. I I I forgot how to pronounce her last name. Because she would only say, like, her first three names. Because that's what she was known for. Um, but she didn't say her married name. So I'm so sorry. Sorry. But Kim is really well known for... Or I guess I should call her Kim Folk. Because that's what a lot of people call her. Her name is Kim Folk. Um, she was... She's not was. She's still alive. She's famous for being... Um, so when Vietnam happened, they dropped napalm ball, bombs bombs oh my god napalm bombs and her village was one of the villages attacked and when it was attacked like when they attacked she was playing and sh there's a picture of her running in the street with the napalm covering her body screaming it's too hot it's too hot um and she was like supposed to die but she didn't and it's basically just her story of how the communists in Vietnam used her as a tool and she eventually ended up getting married even though everyone told her that she never would she ended up having kids even though everyone told her that she never would she found the Lord she is on fire for God she is cool y'all like that woman is just a powerhouse like her and her family are just so sweet and they deserve like all the hugs in the world like it was a really good story I give that one four and a half stars just because it took me forever to get into it well not get into it but like I could leave the story and then come back to it and I just wanted to stay in the story so that's why I'm not giving it a full five stars um the next book that I read was Lock and Key volume one Welcome to Lovecraft by Joe Hill and Gabriel Rodriguez I gave Lock and Key volume one four stars I tried to watch um, the TV show Love for Lock and Key and I thought it was really boring and y'all can hate me for it because I know there are a lot of stands out there but I thought it was juvenile and it felt incoherent and then I read this and I was like well that's why that one didn't work because they just tried to shove way too many parts of aspects of the graphic novel inconsistently out of the linear pattern of the sh like of the original graphic novels which is why it wasn't good for me. Um, so yeah, good storytelling actually matters, and Joe Hill's a good storyteller, so let's stick to the original content, people. So yeah, that's just how I felt about that one. I liked it. It wasn't, like, my favorite graphic novel ever, but I really liked it, and I think I'm gonna continue the series. Then I finished Uglies by Scott Westerfield. See, I read, I attempted to read this book a long time ago, when I was 13. And then I did this thing where I put it on my floor like this, and it stayed there for months. And then eventually I put a, a little a little dog ear, and I said, this, I'll pick it up later. And I'm 22 years old, and I finally picked it up, and I loved it. You know what? This book gets four and a half stars. It's great YA. It's super fun. I'm invested in this world. We follow Tally Youngblood, who lives in a society where she is an ugly she looks like this this is her natural face right well she can have the opportunity to become a pretty and then not look like this she's gonna look like she's got plastic surgery and all kind of other stuff right she gonna look bomb that's your discretion well uh, she makes a friend and this friend does not want to be an ugly and tally ends up having to be a spy and infiltrate a ugly commune that do not want to be turned into pretties. It's just so good. I am starting the next book in the series soon. I am addicted. It has a great plot. I could care less about this romance. I'm not here for this romance. I am here for the plot because this plot is so good. So yeah, those are the 24 books that I read in May. Thanks for hanging out with me for so long if you did. I'm sorry if you didn't. You're probably not watching that if, if you clicked off though. But yeah, thanks for hanging out with me. Hope you read some of these books. Let me know if you have read them or if you're going to. So bye. I'll see you later. Don't forget to subscribe and happy reading.